In today's lecture, we will talk about how to do a CAD design for additive manufacturing, what, what kind of precautions, what are the roles to follow in order to deliver a good CAD design for various additive manufacturing applications. Um, as we know, 3D modeling or a CAD design, which is an abbreviation for computer aided design, they give the engineer and designers the possibility to build uh, realistic computer models uh, for parts and assemblies. So the models can later be 3D printed and can be used to run complex simulations for these parts as well. Uh, you have a wide range of parameters that can be simulated like the strength, the temperature resistance, uh, before any physical models are created, which will save you a lot of time and effort and money and enabling you a way faster and cheaper workflow. So it's important always to start with uh, with the 3D CAD design software, designing the part that you want, as we mentioned before, and as we will discuss in, in this lecture or the next lecture about how to simulate your part and predict his behavior or its behavior before you do a real world part. Firstly, we will start talking about solid modeling. In solid modeling, you create a solid 3D model um, as if it is an actual part in the real world. And uh, you will have a kind of logical workflow for the design that is too much similar to the, proce to the process that you, that you would be using if you want to create that part through manufacturing or in the real world. So these operations, they could include extrusion, drilling, uh, threading as well. Uh, solid models can be as well having joints or either having joints and having intersections, subtracting objects from each other so that you will create your final design or final product as needed. The solid modeling have several advantages, which is giving you the ability to design the part that you want in the software before you have it in real world. So as we said, it will save you a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money. And the other advantage of it is that you can, you can uh, design uh, with a parametric design, which means while you are developing your design, either it's a single part or assembly, if you change a certain parameter, for your design, it will reflect on the whole um, design assembly. Like for example, if you have, if you are designing a pin with the pin head and uh, the cap and all these designs, so when you assemble the part together, you realize that the pin head need to have a large diameter. Then you do that; it will reflect on on the part. If you do that, if you do like the the pin head diameter to be changed for the pin part design then when you go to the assembly you will find it changed as well if you have if you have already created some kind of sketches or drawings in most of the 3d modeling or 3d design applications of today they have this option that it the, any change happen for a single part will reflect all on all the related products of that part so um, and as well you can have your progress to be saved on every stage and uh, on every stage and can be edited at any time during the design. Of course, you can imagine this is uh, a helpful feature. Uh, you don't need to go on when you change the part dimension, you don't need to go back to the assembly and mess up your mating points just to change that dimension as well. So it can be easily and uh, easily and quickly modified and reflected to the main part. Um, either if you create the part um, from scratch or even if you are developing on a previous part. As I mentioned, if you have assembly modeling, then uh, you can go to the individual parts and uh, trying to bond them together and this will give you the opportunity to create complex assemblies or complex models um, that are 
that can be changed at any point and saved at any point in time. So the assemblies can be used uh, to insert standard components sometimes like fasteners or bearings. Um, if you have experience with 3D design CAD softwares, you know that these softwares have their own libraries where you can bring the fastener designs and the bearing designs just by putting the certain part number or, or explanation and description of the fastener or bearing you want and it, it will give you the exact design downloaded directly from the manufacturer. If you have motion elements then can be applied as well to the assemblies and they will give you detailed motion analysis that can be used to evaluate the mechanical properties and mechanical uh, performance for your design. Here we can see two pictures. The one on the left, you have a sketch, a 2D sketch for a certain part with all dimensional details. And on the right, you have the 3D created part. In a lot of cases, you, have a, you will start with 2D design. Maybe you have a certain sketch, either on paper or on software, that you want to turn it to a 3D design then you want to print it out through a 3D printer to have it as a real object, either to use it directly in a certain application or even for inspection to make sure your design is doing what it is supposed to be doing and uh, testing all kinds of physical properties for that part. So solid modeling means you go from 2D design to a 3D solid model. If you, get a, if you make a, a cross section in here, you will find it. it's a solid part it's not a shell moving next we have uh, as well the surface modeling the most famous one is the solid modeling which you create a solid part um, from a 2d design or from an imagined sketch for the surface modeling you are creating uh, surfaces that are combined together closed surfaces having a start and an end point uh, to create kind of hollow shape uh, to be used for 3D printing as well. Uh, usually we use surface modeling if we want to have a more aesthetic feature for it, for our product. Like if you look at your mouse, the computer mouse, you can see this curvy, this kind of curvy design on the top. This is made, I believe, through surface modeling in most cases. You can do it with a solid modeling, but it will take you way longer time than it should be. So it is easy to create um, through surface modeling for organic and free form geometry uh, through this kind of modeling through a CAD software. Uh, you will have a lot of constraints uh, that will face you while doing solid modeling, especially if you want to create the same result that that is needed to be out of, of the surface modeling. So for surface modeling, a lot of constraints that are found in solid modeling are not an issue anymore. And, uh, but the, the only bad thing is that you could have a kind of um, downsides for surface modeling that it will be less accurate than solid modeling. And you'll, one of the famous problems in surface modeling, you need to each surface to be exactly matching the next surface and following the curvature that you want. So this will create some kinds of complications along the way. But still it's a great tool if you want to have an if you want to have an aesthetic part or aesthetic assembly, that's the way to go. Surface modeling, as I mentioned, contains only uh, surfaces of parts. There's no solid interior. There's no solid interior. It's a hollow shell. Uh, but when the part have uh, enough surfaces uh, that can close the part, there's no uh, open-ended uh, curves, then in this way, you have the option through the CAD software. Most of them give you the option to fill that part and use it for 3D printing. So if you're developing uh, design using surface modeling, then it, the difference than the solid modeling that it's hard to go back and make changes because the surface modeling is not parametric design. It means if you change a certain 
curvature or a certain line through the surface modeling, it will not reflect on the whole assembly or on the whole part. Maybe it will even miss it up that you want to do a lot of work to get it back together as a closed, as a closed design. Um, we have a lot of modeling softwares. Each of them have good sides and bad sides. It depends on what kind of, of design that you want to produce. And uh, based on that, you need to consider uh, the way to go. Uh, sometimes you need to use uh, both solid and surface modeling uh, so that you will get the ultimate product that you are looking for. As we said in the, in the computer mouse, maybe the, 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 the upper part that's having the, the scroll and the right and left click to be flexible and to be aesthetic and having a certain curvature, they need to go with us with the surface modeling. Maybe the base which holds the uh, batteries and holds the PCB needs to be done through solid modeling that will make it easier. So in this way, you combine the two modeling approaches to get your final product as needed. We can see here surface modeling can start with a sketch on paper that we will turn it eventually through a 3D software. Then you can make it solid or with a certain thickness to be 3D printed. We can see here as well uh, a surface modeling for a, a, a certain container for a kind of liquid. So you can see here the curvature is um, it's made out of a, of a group of surfaces that are connected together in a certain way to give you the final closed object. The third way to do your CAD design is the sculpting. In sculpting, called sometimes organic modeling, uh, it's used for creating freeform surfaces with intricate details. Uh, like if you want to create a, a face of a character, jewelry, or even organic shapes that are found in nature, like trees or rock formations. We can see here, this is an example of sculpting that's made um, through a CAD software and made as a real product. Um, uh, usually sculpting software packages, um, you, you can find a lot of choices to do that for you depending on how you are comfortable to do it. Firstly, I would believe you are not, uh, mostly you are not in the engineering field doing that, you are in the art field. So you have a software called Pixel Logix ZBrush, you have Autodesk Mudbox, you have 3D Max. These give you the option to design sculptures uh, that can serve your uh, uh, your goal. And then, then the, because these softwares are designed while they're having the sculpting in mind. So they're designed for people who do real sculpting just to make it easier for them to do it through CAD softwares. Uh, they will give you the option to do digital sculptures that will start from a simulated ball of clay same as in real world, then you will make a kind of pressure sensitive drawing table tablet uh, or a manner that will uh, modify the object with all kinds of brushes, just just same as the real uh, real world scu sculpting. So uh, you can you can create the part that you are looking to, uh, whatever it is, either artistic piece or a kind of maybe engineering demonstration or whatever it is. So you can use these 3D software tools. Um, mostly they're used, as I said, by artists. They can create sculptures that consist out of uh, millions of polygons that will capture the intricate details of the character face and the character body so that uh, these characters will come alive to be maybe used in a kind of movie or a kind of a certain scientific simulation. As we can see here, these cartoon, these uh, uh, these cartoonist characters are made through uh, through digital sculpting. So these can be given given motion and mass and so on and so on, so that they can they can simulate a kind of movements or impressions uh, for certain applications. 
The CAD softwares that we use for additive manufacturing, there is a wide range of CAD softwares with different packaging and options available for all kinds of industries. You need to choose the right package, which depends exactly on how familiar you are with that package and on the application that you are looking into. So we have SOLIDWORKS for solid modeling. We have Fusion Autodesk, solid and, solid and surface modeling, SOLIDWORKS, Autodesk, Fusion, which is released uh, relatively recently. CATIA, Autodesk Inventor, SketchUp, Onshape, and etc. There's hundreds of, of, of software packages that you, go, you can go with in order to reach your goal. Now let's go through each CAD software. What is the description of that CAD software and what are the common file types or file extensions for this software? Um, maybe the, the file extensions, as we see here, it means that, that when you create the part or the assembly, so it will have the name of the file, then what kind of file extension it have. Maybe it will look silly, but believe me, it's from my experience, I can tell you it's important to know these because if, if you are in a certain company, like engineering company that's using two different softwares or you are, you are with a um, mixed teams and mixed groups, each one is working on his own preference of software, then it's, it will help you easily to differentiate uh, which software is being used, so which software to, to open this part with and work on it. Uh, sometimes you need to know, oh, is this, the, is this a part or assembly? So you can know PRT is a part, ASM is assembly, DRW is, is a drawing or a sketch. So description for SOLIDWORKS, it's considered uh, one of the famous um, engineering packages that used for CAD designs. Uh, it's considered industry standard for engineering. Uh, for part and assembly modeling, it can give you all kinds of simulations and drawings and assembly tools as well. The next one is Autodesk AutoCAD. It is very famous. So common file types are .w, .dwt or .dwg. Uh, Autodesk AutoCAD is a software package that's considered good for 2D and 3D CAD designs. Myself, I prefer to use it. If you wanna go only with 2D, then use it. If you wanna go with 3D, then uh, this is not the best package to start with in my in my experience in terms of efficiency and time time consumption to create a part. It has been used since 1982. Um, it have been used across a wide range of industries. Uh, a lot of people in the architecture field use that. Um, engineers, graphic designers, and many other professionals. But I would say architecture people and uh, um, the pipe routing engineers, like mechanical engineers who are specified in pipe routing, electrical engineers um, who are required to develop a kind of 2D sketches for the power lines and so on in their electrical components may, may use that. But if you want to go with 3D, you can always go with 3D CAD software and create back the 2D uh, in most cases for for 3D printing designs, let's say. There's Autodesk Inventor, um, the file extension .ipt, .iam, .iw, .idw. Inventor is uh, similar in features for SOLIDWORKS. It can give you professional 3D mechanical design drawing tools and product simulation tools. F Autodesk Fusion, uh, the file extension is F3D. Uh, Fusion 360, similar style works as well. It have integrated manufacturing tools and sculpting tools. It is available for free for students and uh, hobbyists and startups. SketchUp software, it gives you a file extension of W of uh, .skp. It is an entry-level software, easy to use, but it's the problem having basic features compared to SOLIDWORKS and Inventor, these guys. They are used mainly for applications like architectural models and interior designs. Uh, Solid Edge give you parts, common files are PRT or ASM for assembly. Uh, it is a solid uh, modeling software and a 2D orthographic view functionality for mechanical designers. It is a direct competitor for SOLIDWORKS, PTC Creo, and Autodesk Inventor. 
for the PTC Creo, um, the common file extension is uh, PRT and ASM. I believe PTC Creo is the one known previously as Pro Engineer. Uh, it is a suit design software that focuses on product design for certain manufacturers. It consists of apps and uh, each delivering a distinct set of capabilities within the product development. For the Onshape software, this is a cloud-based software. It doesn't have a file extension that's known on the, comp on the PC or computer. Uh, it is a full internet-based CAD software package. It is um, using extensively the cloud computing. Uh, it has a computer in intensive processing and rendering performed on internet-based servers. For the, for the Rhino, Rhino Cirrus, the file extension is .3dm. It is having multi uses. It is giving you mostly very good for freeform surface modeling for engineering, architecture, and jewelry design. ZBrush give you object files. Common file extension is .obg. It is a digital sculpting tool, combines 3D and 2D modeling and texturing and painting. Um, ZBrush and the other traditional modeling packages are different that ZBrush is more close for sculpting, so it's kind of specified for sculpting as we mentioned before. The Autodesk 3ADS Max, the file extension is .3DS or .Max. It is a professional 3D computer graphics program, can make animations, models, games, and images, of, of course. So, so going back with the uh, CAD software, all the previous softwares can generate output files or with the extensions of STL and OBG, which is object files or stereolithography files uh, that can be used for 3D printing um, in parallel with many other output files for various applications that are out of scope for this lecture. If we can look into a survey for the softwares to be, who, which are used by the engineers for a recent survey, SOLIDWORKS is used by 50% of engineers, which I believe is true. SOLIDWORKS is pretty famous, I can say from my experience in the automotive um, and mechanical industry. Um, others, like the SketchUp is used only by 3%, Creo by 4%, Solid Edge by 4%, Fusion by 7%, Inventor by 7%, AutoCAD by 9%, others are used by 16%. Um, then softwares used by designers, not engineers in this case, designers, most designers used SOLIDWORKS as well, 43% of them, Rhinoceros used by 13%, Fusion 360 used by 9%, AutoCAD 9%, Inventor 5%, SketchUp 3%, Onshape 3%, others 